So what do I say? We try to find the only sunny moment in whole Finland, Katya. <laughs> and it's almost gone. Yeah, with sun in Finland you have to be quick. <laughs> Yesterday there was a, everything was melting and now it got frozen. <sighs> the best time. Shall we? Yes. Let's do it. Woo! Yeah, when you offered to do ice skating over the lake, it sounded a little scary for me. <laughs> but now I can see that it's actually quite safe. No worries, it's like over 20 centimeters of ice. That's a beautiful day, a rare opportunity to skate on the lake. Doesn't happen every day uh, because mostly covered with snow and then it's good for skiing. So there was the sun and the frozen lake and we decided to skip the working day and do an interview instead. At oh, least some shots half in of, here. Uh, half of the working day. Y yeah. I still plan to work in the evening. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the topic is still in progress, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are many thoughts running through our heads <laughs> these days. There, is, there has been a very challenging year behind, challenging in many ways, uh, also for Maria, yes. who has been to Skankor, so while it's still fresh, how it was, how was your experience at Skankor? Okay, the experience was huge, it's shaking your life, yes. it's shaking your perceptions, it's shaking your uh, feeling of belonging. Uh -huh. It uh, makes you question, uh, what do you want to do? But wasn't it the same for you? Uh, yes, uh, yes, in, in many ways. Uh, I think uh, rather differently compared to your experience, because I've been working in the US in the past, like 12 years ago when I was a student, I was a part of a work and travel program and I went through this stages of uh, getting overexcited by the US as an environment and thinking to live in there, like stay there permanently, but it actually went away for me in a few weeks uh, after this feeling came. Was it the same for you? Yes, it been back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> back and forth and uh, it, I would say in a new quality so uh, yeah that that's why that's why i guess it's shaking so you kind yeah. of get to consider one thing and then to reevaluate another thing so just lots of <laughs> lots of reevaluations what did you feel about skonkar i mean for me it was very different from any kind of exchange visits what, what did you feel um i feel that they're unique um, setting kind of a, a unique community how um, because it's um, it's a safe very safe um, Scandinavian slash Nordic environment um, in the heart of Stanford and in the heart of American um, educational academic system so that's um, I would say it's quite unique um, why and how it's unique uh, first you kind of you get a Nordic a Scandinavian door to um, the top level researchers, uh, professors, mm -hmm. which you before going there only read and cite and in the best case see at the conference and talk to them and then you just run into them um, in the middle of the campus or listen to their presentation or arrange a coffee meeting and then they reply, they reply within an hour or two and it's a shock. I think it's quite different from um, generally the European culture versus American culture. Yeah. But particularly with Stanford professors, they're incredibly active and they're, the distance, the, like the mental distance to star scholars 
um, is much smaller there when you are there and when you're supported by yeah. Scancore. Scancore also provides kind of an introductory service with um, like giving you this Scancore fellow um, kind of title and uh, even if you're visiting scholar uh, everyone or many people know what is Skankor in there so you kind of you, you, you get a reference of who you are and where you're coming from yeah, uh, a brand which is, is super cool um, yeah. to have when you are a young um, scholar very anxious feeling very anxious to True. approach a, a star scholar and get some feedback on your work and they are amazing in, in, yeah. in doing that in my experience I only had positive experience even when people work uh, even when it, we didn't find common interest to start a paper together, for instance, I got very valuable feedback from, from people, very open, honest, um, and like people spending lots of time with you just talking, chatting. I remember. Yeah, professor level, like suddenly. Yeah. Suddenly com commit some time to you. Yes, I remember two hours talking to Woody Powell and. Uh, in the, mean, in the meantime, remembering the stories of other uh, scholars, other postdocs saying, oh yeah, I was also feeling very anxious when, uh, that he's so nice. Yeah, that's, oh. that's the feeling that you get. But he's a part of Skanko, right? Uh, yes, I think so. Affiliated somehow. Somehow, yes. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, uh, the experience was that uh, there was also, like any other, any other professors from any other departments, actually also quite open. Uh, unless they're busy and not answering you, <laughs> which is also <laughs> might be the case. Yeah, they're they're just open to discuss with you, and even if you're not uh, from their own background and lacking the expertise in their field, but if there is something interdisciplinary, they are they are pretty much open. Yeah, yeah, and uh, there's also unique environment in terms of. Um, um, because there's Silicon Valley, right? and um, it affects in multitude of different of different ways uh, stanford uh, i mean for example people who are i don't know experienced founders and venture capitalists and about whom you are actually reading books mm -hmm. you suddenly have uh, them teaching at stanford oh yeah right yeah i yeah. saw that too um the startupers um, famous founders and just also famous CEOs, for instance, yeah. when, when you just see them yeah. <laughs> there, you can ask any question. Yeah. And, and if not courses, then at least guest lecturers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you can come chat and... Uh, and yeah. it, it, you feel even like a little overwhelmed with all these possibilities yeah. and, and all the kind of learning opportunities in there. Yeah. That's indeed true. Yeah. But very cool. Yeah, true. Silicon Valley and Stanford, it's... Uh, Extremely, it is filled with intellectual people, super interesting uh, people with, uh, who, who are doing interesting missions oh, yes. with whom it's so cool to talk about pretty much anything, including what they do, but not, and they have a huge amount of interesting hobbies. Yes, yes. Wow, it's just so cool to hang out with them. Uh, then. Then what? But then it's also, I guess it's a product of this uh, highly, help me here. Highly demanding. Highly um, demanding and highly productive uh, ecosystem. Yeah, very, very efficient, uh, very like, with, with very uh, high goals. Um, because basically one of kind of reflections on my Stanford experience is the sky is the limit is kind of an attitude which you adopt there because there is actually no no limit all the limits are in our head yes. and it does feel a little overwhelming yes because even if you think about the work day there is an attitude of a work-life balance in here where it's known that in Silicon Valley, I saw so many people <laughs> working on um, on a seat in a Uber drive. Yeah, like, it's like every minute, everything is about efficiency, right? Yes, yes. Almost to the point of madness. Yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> especially if you look from the Nordic perspective, where you yes. think you've been uh, like too hardworking or like not really. Uh, following the Nordic philosophy 
to the book in terms of work-life balance and then you come to Silicon Valley and you're like, oh my God, these people don't have holidays. They, they I, keep working in Uber. <laughs> they I, only listen to, to the, they only listen to audiobooks when they, when they ride a bike. They, they use every minute. Yes, every minute it goes to the use. And uh, that's also, if you try to follow that, and for me, it was very curious to try to adopt that uh, lifestyle. Uh, it's actually very exhausting. Oh, you, yes. don't have, uh, you don't have time for wandering. You don't have time of silence. Really? Uh, yeah, you're supposed to use every minute. Again, if you're, if you're free, then you need to at least listen to an audiobook <laughs> or read posts from... I don't know, some Silicon Valley... Uh, okay, Silicon wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Are, are you still talking about um, also about the uh, academic environment? Or are you now more into the startup environment? Because you've been combining... I've been combining. Roles, like yes. crazy. It's, it's, so you're an extreme case in itself. Sorry. <laughs> but what about academics? Uh, are they also like not having a minute of silence? What about meditation, culture? There is a lot about consciousness, mindfulness and meditation. But again, it feels like it's not, it's not been part of your life in terms of some kind of peaceful, peaceful, just natural happening it's like all forced and now okay now it's time for for being quiet let's be quiet for for five minutes okay meditation is over let's go <laughs> so it's, I get it's, it. it's a bit it's a bit artificial at least it's a general expression impression that i got uh i bet academics are more relaxed um bad academics Huh? Bad no, 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 I, I bet. Ah, you bet. Okay. I bet <laughs> academics are more relaxed than startuppers. Yeah. On average, though. But it, it also could quite clearly be seen in their salaries. <laughs> I guess. That's true. By the way, postdocs in Silicon Valley are one of the poorest people. <laughs> what expensive means? Do, do you remember any figures? Uh, figures. The prices. Okay, well, uh, the, the most probably awful something that you uh, get even before you go there is the accommodation, mm -hmm. right? I paid like about 3,000 a month, like 3,000 a month for, for, house. for not a house. It's, uh, you, you would be renting something like a house or more like a castle in here for this <laughs> money, right? On the, on the lakeshore or you know, on a, with your personal island or something. But there, it's for a room in somebody's house, mm -hmm. not even a full kitchen. So that's a, a luxury that's a, option. That's a luxury option. And only, I would say, as I've heard, and as you can deduct, uh, only rich people really buy apartments. Normally, people just rent. And like they spend pretty much a lot of their salaries, if not all, for renting stuff. And it's very common that people like postdocs or people who are like early stage in the companies, they actually get together and rent houses as a commune. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah, the style. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Another thing, uh, another thing is medicine. Mm -hmm. I've heard a conversation that uh, somebody's sex race uh, costed just 7,000 oh, out yeah. of blue. Yeah. For yeah, I have, I have my personal experience and when when things like uh, getting to a hospital, yeah, it happens mm. and it was extremely expensive. What right? has happened to you? Um, nothing, it was just stomach flu, but it was a severe reaction of my body mm -hmm. and I was hospitalized. And um, as it was um, around Christmas time, the insurance company couldn't react quickly enough. Ouch. And uh, I was, I, I, that's, that's why I had the chance to see the bills, mm -hmm. how the, the, the Did you have to pay yourself? No, no, no. Okay. I, I was, of course, it's, it's, it's a must, I think, to be insured if you can. Yeah. Um, so I was insured and uh, I didn't pay myself. Um, and, uh, but how much? What, what um, was that? If I remember right, it was about 13,000, 15,000. For? 
for uh, for ambulance and um, a few tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, and I, good thing you didn't pay yourself. Yeah, another another story was when uh, when I was actually a Skankor postdoc. Um, they 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 mix up the documents and they didn't uh, figure out the actual insurance that I had, and I was insured by uh, by by Stanford. Um, and and I and I saw the actual prices for just the consulting a doctor and the tests mm -hmm. and uh, two bills for seeing for, for talking to a doctor for 15 minutes and a few tests uh, was I think four plus three thousand uh, dollars so the, the thousands this, of dollars yes, just to see yes, a doctor for yes, a moment and some tests oh. so th they come just completely out of the blue but this is this is a normal uh, normal uh, thing. Uh, have you heard also that thing that is very hard to get or actually the appointment of a doctor, so you, if you are not brought by ambulance uh, or worked yourself to emergency, then uh, you actually might wait for three, four months, or even more to get a. Um, get I a think it opinion. really depends on the medical provider okay. and okay. the insurance that you have, and in, yeah. in many circumstances, yeah. and the type of doctor you need to see. Yeah. But, but I've heard also I, that. I yeah. didn't you know, experience problems yeah. like that. My waiting time was okay. -ish or even fast enough. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. no problem in my experience, good, but good. it depends. Lucky you. But what about other costs? Do you, you've been there lately, so what about their like monthly costs for food and things uh, like that? I don't know, everything, everything costs a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, even food costs a lot. Yeah, so to be there you need to have savings, I guess. You need to have savings. I mean, I've had daily allowances, some, some all, the, all the stuff, but it's just, just, it feels like uh, your your account becomes a waterfall. <laughs> yes, <laughs> draining, draining, draining. Yes, drain. yes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, that's how uh, it goes. Yeah, that that was the feelings. Getting back to the question of uh, the rhythm in Silicon Valley and like, what about if if I'm a typical Nordic person, like not necessarily scholar, but a typical Nordic person would I easily fit the Silicon Valley environment no no why <laughs> and what should if if I want to try what should I do <laughs> um, you would be too slow and inefficient I'd say if you're a typical Nordic person well it's so beautiful in here Will I experience lots of anxiety because of that? Uh, I don't know. How do you? How, I, I I feel that uh, you just you just wouldn't fit if you want to maintain your your own kind of okay. So pace you would of need life. to change. You would yeah. need to change. You, you your would pace need of to life. change, and the moment you start changing, you're first very excited, like how cool everything is. Whoa. And then you are too exhausted. Okay. And then you come back home to Nordic to re like to, to regain your energy, right? Yes. So that's probably the idea of a skunkor. To shake you up a little bit. Your peaceful Nordic environment, your peaceful <laughs> brain. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so do you have time to lay down? <laughs> and and rest and recharge when that's, you are there. That's a beautiful idea. Yeah, it feels like you don't. Yeah, you have to do like. Yeah. What about like sports and hobby? You also have to be very efficient. Yeah, in there. yeah, you have to be. Very, and then tomorrow we have to go on a concert. And then tomorrow. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, it's true. There are so many opportunities in there compared yeah. to La Peranta or entire Finland, even I guess. But. Um, so do you, do you, did you catch the fear of missing out there, like to catch everything, to be on every party or event? Oh, yeah, you know, not really, to be honest, okay. not that one. That's good. But uh, yeah, just the feeling of crazy, crazy roller coaster all the time. And, even, and it's very weird because I actually been visiting, I, I, I've had the huge amount of holidays 
Uh-huh. I've never had them that much here. <laughs> uh, well, it's also because you want to travel everywhere, but still. Yeah. Then I've had a very rich cultural life. Uh-huh. I've had uh, very rich socializing experiences. And also all these like um, thematic parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like there was a huge amount of things. Uh-huh. But I feel like I've been always so busy and with no time for, for what? I don't know, what what do you need time for if you can do all those things? But it wasn't like I was suffocating somehow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't have time to stop, think, yeah. process maybe that much. Unless it's planned. Start now. <laughs> oh, wow. Crazy. Um, <laughs> another question which I got was about, um, you, you told about socializing, uh, that you've been having so much of great social experience. Um, and if you are a, a, a typical Nordic, usually quite shy, relatively shy. Person. And then you don't socialize at all. Yeah, so, so w- <laughs> what do you need to do as a Nordic person, a Nordic startup or a Nordic scholar? going there you need to have an agenda if you have a point uh-huh. uh, then if, if you have an aim for something then it's easy to understand where you need to go with whom you need to talk and what about uh-huh. and if you're just hanging out there you, so. I guess for a Nordic person it would be very difficult to force first of all to come to an an event Uh and then to talk to anybody in there Uh but if you have an agenda then it's easy for me the agenda was sim deck and i was Uh just choosing the events and people to whom i can either share the experiences or learn something from or or get a new clients or investors Uh something like that so your socializing should be structured as yeah, well. Yeah, on pur- purposeful. Purposeful. But no, even even uh, absolutely, and uh, it, it's not even about uh, shy Nordic people uh, or reserved Nordic mm-hmm. people. It's uh, generally, I think, I mean, those events wouldn't be useful for you if you don't have a target there or an mm-hmm. agenda. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. And and what about the particular moment? now i mean that there has been some some notes of crisis um all over the world and i heard the same yeah the same kind of moods uh, when i just visited silicon valley recently so what's your take on that what's the mood of startuppers investors um in there the... are two things going on i'd say one thing is the is the technically the crisis people cannot raise money uh, people have to uh, fire people from from their fire employees, like sometimes substantial share, mm-hmm. or if that's a big company, then in absolute numbers it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So uh, investors start to be very cautious about what to fund. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's all becomes it's hard time. Mm-hmm. On the other side, it seems like it's a wheel and it's just rolling, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Sometimes it's like a bit harder, sometimes easier, but things are continuing to go on. Mm-hmm. People continue to be mad about their efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Chase their calendars. Yeah. Chase their calendars, <laughs> yeah. Oh, crazy. And what kind of hobbies? You talked about hobbies a lot. What kind of hobbies are... What, what people do there? What do smart, efficient people do? U.S. Uh, California is a, is a land of opportunities for hobbies. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, first of all, there is ocean there. So there is diving, surfing, uh, kiting. And whenever you get to the, to the shore, you can see all those people doing those things. And sometimes in the evening with the, with the sunset, sometimes it's before the work on the sunrise just people just built in into their lives mm-hmm. it is beautiful mm-hmm. and then uh, then when you go to the uh, away from the ocean to the to the land then um, hiking? Trust, hiking hiking for sure I mean hiking is not a hobby hiking is what you're supposed to do anyway <laughs> as a Californian okay. person and the forests are so beautiful you, you, you gotta do that then. Uh, also because uh, like it's 
pretty much the mountains are nearby and although California is very warm uh, even in winter uh, if you go up to mountains there is snow and you can do all the all the things like ski touring snowshoeing uh, what is it mountain that downhill skiing uh, cross country what not everything snow related mm -hmm. and then there is a bunch of activities like sports things uh, triathlon uh, running uh, climbing wow i've been i've been into climbing in yeah. california cool. and and uh, and again nature is so inspiring there all nature in california is another one huge bonus point <laughs> you just you just need to go there just to just to embrace and breathe in all that different and beautiful nature like my favorite is yosemite i was there uh, just on a road trip and we just did a little a couple of little hikes but it's so astonishing i now want to come there and climb there i have this yosemite on my uh, on my what is it uh, screen uh, screen yes my my i every morning i start work from observing the the rocks of Yosemite thinking, oh my God, I'm going to climb, climb and uh, climb there. Yes, yeah. The nature is beautiful. It's yeah, unbelievable. I totally agree. And uh, there is one, at least one unique thing about California that uh, traveling across California, you can experience uh, very different climates from yes. very warm Los yes. Angeles, for instance, yes. to, yes. And to it's windy San Francisco and then up north to, to Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very different and it looks like you're suddenly on a different planet, literally, because trees are huge, ocean is big, uh, I don't know, rocks are, are huge and beautiful and and everything is so different and it's like the, there are literally more colors and the sky seems to be higher, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yes, it does actually, the sky is higher because uh, there is uh, more sun, mm -hmm. more sunny days. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you just don't have that low clouds all the time, mm -hmm. and it does feel higher. And what about the signal? Do you have a, a good reception there? Signal in terms of when you work in the nature? <sighs> yes, on the Israel. <laughs> that was actually very funny because uh, no, of course there is generally a generally connection in uh, in California is very bad, especially on Stanford <laughs> campus. I don't know why. But a generation of, uh, of scan Koreans, uh, please confirm that I'm not wrong, <laughs> they complain about the Wi-Fi signal. Mm -hmm. Even even official Stanford, it's like awful. It's like you're not in Silicon Valley, you're like somewhere in India, but uh, I don't know. That's, the connection is very poor there. And of course, there are um, areas, quite a lot of areas on, in nature when you get out when there is no connection at all. So. Uh, it was quite often for me that I would climb a rock and would uh, stay a little bit up there <laughs> to update the emails or to communicate with my team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. so there is an incentive to go higher <laughs> to the mountain. <laughs> there is an incentive to go higher. Yeah. Yeah. Connection is rubbish there. Incredible. Yeah, I don't remember that from, from, from the Stanford experience that oh. it was that, that terrible. Maybe it got worse in the, in the, in, in the meanwhile, but... It was that terrible. Uh, as a matter of fact, I uh, would take all my, um, all my video calls either from home, which I was renting, or from co-working space in, uh, in San Francisco. And when I was working at Stanford, and well, some people would, would work a lot with... Uh, with some documents, then it's just okay to sit in a basement. Scan Korean uh, offices are a bit in a basement and there it's just unbelievably hard to do anything. Even the page is not loading <laughs> it's, it's in the internet. So I would often work outside and outside is very nice in there. So. Somehow a question of learning popped into my question, uh, into my head. Uh, what, um, what we hear in La Peranta or in... Nordics in general should learn from Silicon Valley people. Uh, you mean hobby-wise or? No, generally, like, what, what is the lesson learned for, for, for us to take from your experience? What should we do? If anything, 
maybe we should just stay as we who as who we are. Let's yeah. stay as who we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, well. that's an interesting answer. So we shouldn't change anything. We no. just should be us ourselves. Why? You know what? Uh, visiting America and Silicon Valley gives you a perspective on things. And initial initial feeling is that oh my god, we are here so slow, so inefficient, so uh, so what? So it's just so purposeless even because they are every minute is driven by a certain purpose, right? Yes. Uh, and yes, it's something that you would immediately want to learn. And my advice two months ago when I was there uh, would be, yes, let's learn efficiency. Let's read 10 times more. Let's use every minute. Let's care about our health in much better way. Let's track all our glucose level <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> and reduce our fat. <laughs> and reduce percentage. our fat percentage. Uh, and now, and what's your thinking now? And now, I'd say um, those. Why? It does feel at the moment, and I don't know. I'm very biased. It's all very fresh. The feeling is developing. Yes. So I don't want even to express it as my opinion, but maybe as my temporary uh, conclusion. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not like even conclusion. It's a process. It's a yeah, process. process. And the stage you are at right now, yes. which is second of January, 2023. Yes. Um, so what's what's at, your at take? two o'clock today. <laughs> I can say that uh, this obsession with efficiency feels like madness and very unhealthy madness, to be honest. At least unhealthy for Nordic, Nordic mind. Brain for Nordic yeah. mind, yes. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, uh, yes, so. because it's, it's, it could be different for different people. So for some people, only the Silicon Valley phase of living is the only right way. For yes. others, it's not working and it's inefficient. But uh, one thing which I wanted to check with you, whether you feel like you've been in touch with so many people there, whether you feel that their, their philosophy of efficiency is actually working for them and whether it makes them happy, whether it, it makes them fulfilled. We need to ask their uh, psychotherapist. <laughs> Yeah. It's hard to say because like when a, when a machine is in a constant motion, you think that everything is working well. You can't diagnose it you when can't, it's on the yeah. go. But you know what, actually, with many people I've been talking to, they all been to some kind of identity crisis too. Ooh. And then uh, there are, well, Silicon Valley makes you very kind of limited in terms of choosing uh, who you work as what is a profession because only pretty much IT IT people are able to earn money sufficient to enjoy life in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, including postdocs, they're uh -huh. not. Mm -hmm. And even like a family of two postdocs, for example, with two kids, uh -huh. they already, it's insufficient to live there. Yes, you yes. cannot even do the kindergarten stuff. Yeah, and the daycare is very expensive in there. Yeah. And the schooling as well. Yeah, so it's out of the question. There should be at least one person in the in a, in a family working in Google or some other yeah. tech company, yeah. and uh, Big better too. Software world. Yeah, software world, or hardware, but still <laughs> around. So, yeah, and then because that's the only way to be pretty much, <laughs> unless mm -hmm. you are doing a successful startup, but that's also like. Uh, not that easy. Uh, you cannot do anything else to sustain your life. And that means all the artists, all the... Well, Christ, so all the people who are not IT people, they are forced to work in IT and they are suffering from it. Oh, really? Yes. Because they don't want to. They, they would rather find themselves somewhere else. Yeah. But then they are not able to because then they cannot live in there. Do you so foresee tricky. any crisis for Silicon Valley then, a social crisis on top of the economic crisis, which is inevitable? 
What do you mean for C? It's uh, it's already there. It's already there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I mean, look how beautiful it is. This will stay. This will stay. <laughs> uh, regardless of the shaky social world. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's priceless, I would say. Yeah, I when agree. all the stock markets will go <laughs> down. Yes, we will this have will here. keep going. Yes, we will have that. Yeah. So speaking about uh, social crisis, I mean that's one big thing to discuss because uh, there is a there is a homeless people problem. Yes. Um, and it's not like a couple of homeless people here and there in the big towns, big cities, like yeah. we might have in Europe. It's mm -hmm. like a whole community, uh -huh. whole layer of uh, homelessness all around you. Yeah. Especially in San Francisco and other big cities. I, well, San Diego, I guess, too. But yeah, but even in the small communities as uh, uh, smaller towns like Palo Alto, so even around Stanford, not inside Stanford, but around. Um, and uh, those people, although they have a huge amount of budgets and programs from the government, they're still homeless, they're still outside. They yeah. don't have uh, basic, uh, uh, basic things like a warm toilet. Yes. Or any toilet. Yes. Or shower. And and uh, yeah so despite all the problem programs the problem is still there the problem is still there they do that they hang out outside they do uh, narcotics they uh, sometimes uh, some of them are mental as I understood so it's, uh, it's people who are supposed to be in uh, in facilities but they're not or at least with some care mm -hmm. oh so beautiful yeah, you as a homeless, you wouldn't survive in that climate. Yes. So you here do no need place homes. for homeless. Yeah, and I think it's also the population and the the system which uh, makes people find home, at least some kind of home. Yeah. And yeah, and it, I agree with you. It's it's scary. I still remember too well the my Academy of Management experience in Chicago, where the the kind of the call of the conference was making lives better, and mm -hmm. you have to walk through the central Chicago to the conference venue, where ten thousand ten thousand people, I think, were um, attendees, and you saw so many homeless people. Like mm -hmm. it was scary it was really precious i thought like what if we take at least a hundred of of our academy of management people to no. think about it and try to solve the problem it, they, they do work on on this it just doesn't seem to solve it and yeah. i think yeah. it, it feels like in the us the problem is only getting getting bigger yeah with the it, crisis yeah definitely i know there are a huge amount of layoffs hopefully those people are not getting to that class of of yes. Business, but uh, yes. yeah, and I mean that's crazy. So let me. Uh, I, the, it's not shown. It's not discussed much somehow. And yeah. as a Scancor student, I uh, or exchange researcher, uh, I wasn't ready for that somehow. But here it is. So you're visiting San Francisco. You take the train from the university to San Francisco Central Station. You get out, and then you're surrounded already on the station by homeless people who smell like hell, look scary. Uh, then you get out, you go, in my case, to a co-working space where a huge amount of startups uh, hang out, just to talk with a couple of people and see how this startup ecosystem works. And while you pass by, you have a couple of people sleeping here and there in sleeping bags or without. You can see uh, a couple of tents, uh, one of them would be a tent, another one would be just a bunch of a textile box. over the a over box. something. Yeah, a a box. Main box. Yeah, people live there. Then uh, another person. Actually, Katya, was you? We were passing by there. Yeah. Exactly. Then that place I was talking about, and one person was 
I'm very sorry, take a sheet outside. <laughs> yep, yep, doing their business. It was, it was, and I was, it was my first day after landing from Finland and yeah. it's a huge contrast. Yeah, and, and, and there are two very big emotions. Uh, one is uh, pity and desperation, and I also was asking all the startups, like, stop doing your artificial intelligence, go <laughs> so that, yeah. come on. Yeah. And, and I feel, I, I feel very strong uh, guilt. Yeah. When I see it, like, I feel immediate need to do something to take action. Yeah. That's what what I feel yeah. when I when I see that. Um, yes. Of course, there is a belief that homeless people. Uh, made their choice that, that it's their choice but it's really hard to believe it's very that hard to when believe. you especially when you come from yeah. the Nordic I, I've heard that yes it, it's their choice they, they have the accommodation somewhere far away but they just choose to stay in San Francisco <laughs> yeah that, okay and second thing second thing that I strongly feel about the situation where I f when I face it is uh, is uh, deep unbelievably strong disgust it's just so, it just shakes you how much it's awful. And I actually realized only when I come back here that uh, being around there with that problem unsolved is just so much stress. It's, it just doesn't let you be in peace. It's just all the time makes you very uncomfortable, very, very deeply uncomfortable living there. So. Yeah, it's not only homeless people, it's also like many, many families which have to have a couple of jobs to to feed their family, yeah. basically. And if you uh, just take a bike ride from, um, uh, from Stanford campus and uh, like their downtown of Palo Alto to East uh, Palo Alto, you will see a huge contrast and um, a terrifying sometimes, um, um, sometimes contrast. And people were even warning me like, don't go there, don't rent an apartment in East Palo Alto. Uh, it happened that I've been there for for a couple of weeks and. Uh, coming from from Russia, in one, from one of the most criminal towns in Russia, it didn't feel too scary, <laughs> but it's also um, not the best ground to come from. But um, still, a huge contrast, and yeah. you you feel like very bad being around a shiny Stanford campus and being very and sharing the overall feeling of being indifferent to what happens just a few miles away from yeah. you. Yeah. And people somehow got used to it in there, right? Yes, yes. It's, yeah, it's just, it's normal. I mean, yes, there is a problem, but it's normal. It's weird. It's, yeah, normalizing yeah. terrible things is, uh, I guess. But how else you can live with that? I mean, yeah. as a, just a person, you gotta live somehow. So it's also understandable. It's the same with the uh, war in Europe. It keeps going. Yeah. And we just, we, uh, hard to say, but we get used if you can yeah. get used to it yeah. but we do get used yeah. to it otherwise you burn out from just yeah. so much you, you go through it. the stages but yeah. you do get used to terrible things yeah yes america i would say my biggest takeaway from this visit is that america in many senses in many different layers is a country of contrasts yes intellectual and rich and beautiful versus homeless yeah Poor. Then, yeah, and poor. Um, without any access to education. Yeah. If not the basic things. Yeah. Okay, shall we? Yeah, let's move home for let's some. Let's say warranty. bye to the beautiful landscape in here. It's also very beautiful out there now with all the sunshine. Okay, one, one other question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know that um, it's probably my, my own perception of it, but I know that people in Finland are very um, used to or sometimes even enjoying being on their own, being themselves. So sometimes being lonely doesn't... doesn't uh, lonely too, we get, we get that here. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, what about Silicon Valley? Uh, do you get this feeling there, especially like if you travel there alone, or what about the people there? Are they all like surrounded by friends and uh, have always have the circles because there are so many interesting people around, or is the loneliness part of their Silicon Valley as well? Excellent question. Again, disclaimer, I don't think that my experience is representative, mm -hmm. but my general feel about that would be that if in Finland we get loneliness from being alone, yes, there you get loneliness from being from being in a crowd. All Surrounded by yeah. people. Wow, can you tell a bit more about that? I, I don't know, it's just, it's just you're just always in a company because like it's fun to be in and then and then and then because probably you're supposed to spend time with people you do spend time with them but is it like about the connection being not deep enough that you still feel lonely okay for, for me it's hard to say but i i generally don't that enjoy the crowd yeah i like more yeah so which like, is very nordic yeah which is very nordic i feel much more comfortable in a small and cozy company mm -hmm. like uh, one two three people <laughs> <laughs> one is probably the best. <laughs> one is the best <laughs> um yeah but i don't know uh it's hard to say. I guess people are just... Uh... I don't know. So Seriously, I don't know. Maybe it, it's, it's just like a... building like the relationship there feels very kind of superficial or not deep. Because I know we, we always joke about... We joked with you like the last week when we met our colleague in the corridor saying hi in American way like saying hi how are you and just passing by without really caring how how the person is doing yeah it's just like a whatsapp yeah <laughs> true it might be the case that americans in general and american culture not necessarily americans right everybody who lives there they're much more open for a surface contact yes but uh there is and there is a lot of going on and a lot of fun going on with this relatively surface connections what it's just beautiful. It is. <laughs> yeah, but there is not much that deep connection developing yes, there. Yes, yes. You got that feeling too? Um, Tell I me mean, about your experience. Um, I am the person who is always up for deep connections. So I think I try to build it even in, in Silicon Valley. In, in Nordic context, it's more difficult because um, you just need more time to build a connection with mm -hmm. people. So it takes longer time. But maybe it's more sustainable. I mean, it really depends on people. Plus, in Silicon Valley, there are so many diverse people. So you will yeah. find someone to build a deep connection with. But I, I would agree that the majority, it feels like very, very receptive to building new links. But at the same time, you, you feel like, is it all real? Yeah. Is it like, is a person that you just kind of trying to build the relationship yeah. with is it like can you count on him or her as a friend or not yeah. really uh, yeah and sometimes it even feels that it's uh, purposeful f forceful default um, operational uh, state of people that they are always distant so they are open to you but they are simultaneously always distant somehow. yes yes that's that's the, my feeling as well Yeah, I agree with you that it's um, it's uh, way more difficult to um, to make sure that you build a deep connection mm -hmm. with with someone. Yeah, and, and then a another thing is that again people are obsessed with that efficiency, mm -hmm. and there is simply when every minute is allocated to something, there are no minutes allocated to you. And even if they are allocated to you, it's like with meditation. Okay, now you have this two, two minutes for you. 
Yeah, it feels very forceful. Kind it, of. Yeah, it feels a bit artificial, like mechanical somehow. Yeah. Yeah. On the other side, if you're not that... Um, and understandable, because if you're not that careful with your time, then you do get a lot of inefficiencies. Which is unacceptable in Silicon Valley. Yeah. It's so not it's like bad, it's just unacceptable, I think. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, I've met different people there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people who are perfectly fine spending time with their families. Mm -hmm. There are people who are perfectly kind of relaxed and they are not chasing the startup idea, but they mm -hmm. are like just sitting in a company and just doing the their mm -hmm. job and like more, I would say, Nordic style. So there mm -hmm. is... There is a range of stuff. Yep. Uh, there is a range of attitudes. So it's not like every single person there is obsessed. Mm -hmm. But general feeling from the whole area and from the culture is like that, right? Yep. Yep, indeed. And your um, expression of being surrounded by people and feeling <laughs> alone in there versus being alone here and yeah. feeling lonely, which feels a little more organic. Yeah, to true. To feel lonely when you are alone. Yes. <laughs> and not to feel lonely when you're yeah. surrounded Does by people. Does it resonate with you also? I think it's... Um, it, my case is a little biased because I always try to find someone to to, to talk and, and, find, and find common interests and don't go if I don't feel that there is a, um, a resonating connection in there. But... I think that I can I can easily kind of find myself on an event in Silicon Valley where I just feel that I don't belong in here mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. Even though people will be very polite, very receptive um, and very open to diversity. Yeah. And I will see all these efforts. Mm -hmm. I will see all these efforts. I will understand their point. I would know that they are actually very welcoming, but still it wouldn't be there. And it's nothing wrong with me or nothing wrong with them. It's just that yeah. two different worlds, two different yeah. perceptions, two different values. Yes, true. On the other hand, speaking of my current attitude that I uh, don't like it anywhere anymore. <laughs> uh, here it often feels that people are too slow, too not enthusiastic, too much uh, kind of limited and by choice limited by their own um, little tasks and responsibilities. Like too much boiling in their own water. Yeah, not trying to reach something, don't get that boiling on or No Mars mission. Yeah, or... so there I felt really like, oh my God. That's the place for me <laughs> for, for, for a while. And uh, yeah, now it's a scary moment to be in because I'm sure that's not the place for me. And I also don't feel like it's entirely the place for me here. Well, except for this. This, is, this can stay. <laughs> yeah. I can tell that I'm very happy that you're back mm -hmm. and that you value the place where you are now. I mean, I'm a selfish, like in a, in a very selfish way. I'm glad to gain my friend back uh, especially after I kind of encouraged you to go there and there was so much excitement about the place. Which I'm very there. grateful for. Yes. <laughs> Thank you by oh. the way but I'm very glad that you're back. Mm. I'm very glad that you're back. <laughs>